Southern Pacific, streamlined, the orange, the red ones, the daylights, Bachman 484, anything, steam stuff, broken gears, what a hassle. I spent a month and a half going through all the options trying to figure out how to fix these dang things. I got it figured out. I did it. I learned. I got one running. I promise you, I did it. Well, hang out till the end. We'll show you how. Also, I'm going to show you how you can tell the difference between the Type 1 or Generation 1 and the Type 2 or Generation 2. I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Let's get into it. Well, here is our primary locomotive that we are going to fix. This is a customer's locomotive. It belongs to Christopher Linky up there in Canada. He sent it down wanting to get this one fixed up here. I already had one sitting around. This one was donated to the channel by Nathan Moore. And then uh, Christopher, he had also sent down another one. So we've got three locomotives here that are all, all broken, thanks to uh, Bachman and their fantastic engineering. And not even wanting to support the stuff. You know, the, the, the fix is so dang simple. Why they wouldn't do it on their own, it's beyond me. So we're gonna fix, see here we got, we got floppage, bad stuff, bad stuff going on. Now, even though these two locomotives, they look almost identical, the, the uh, road number is a little different, which, you know, isn't that big of a deal. I did some primary research and found out that this is what's called a Type 2. And we'll get into this in a little bit, and I'll show you why there's Type 1s, the 4454s. This is a Lionel by Bachman, so I might as well just be a Bachman. And this is a Bachman also. We need to get this shell off. We know we got broken gears because it's a Bachman. So let's focus on this little fella right here first. Using my paint trays to keep the pieces parts in. There's a bolt up here and I see that it was tightened sufficiently to crack the frame. That's never any good. Hopefully we can get a little glue on there and give her a few more years. Now of course we're going into this just blind again. So I've, I've never done it. Does this one do anything? I don't know. We're going to find out. It's certainly got enough length to it. Probably just holds this draw bar in. I'm hoping it's also holding the body on. Oh, e. God. Oh, nope. What do we got to do? Come on. Oh, there it is. Yep. Okay, so those two take the body off. And we want to get this on. Now I can... They do a fantastic job. Bachman makes great, great looking bodies. And then running gear. Thanks, guys. Thank God I'm not bitter. It's got the old split frame in it. A really nice, healthy, look at that big monster worm gear right there. Shh. Can motor, yo. Casting our peepers around on this. What does this thing weigh? Pounds and ounces? Okay, we'll start off there. Oh, just a little shy of a pound. What if I put the shell on it? Are we gonna come into a solid pound? Huh, yep, one pound. Let me switch this for 486 grams for all the people that don't live in America. We know what's going on here. Two screws here to get the cover off. Oh, yeah, that fell right down into the mechanisms. There he is. Yup, lucked out. <laughs> and there we go. Were they nice enough? To, they did. They put a screw over here for the old, what I'm going to call a ground strap. It's not really a ground. You know what I mean. It's the, other, it's the other half of the flow of the juices. All plastic, yeah. Nice looking trucks on it though, because you know, it looks really super nice. Is this gonna sit upside down now? It's hard working on this thing, it's so, it's so tall. So there's our dilemma right there. The old cracked gears. Mm, mm, mm. And of course they're made out of something that, that, you know, nothing that humans have made can glue. I, I, don't, underst I don't understand that. They tell us they put a man on the moon. Oh, the smoker just fell out. I'd like to lift this motor some, because I want to be able to freewheel the gears. I can see a copper strap over there picking up juices from over here. Here's a copper strap here picking up juices, and I am just curious if this thing is friction fitted in there. The frame is already starting to come apart. I don't, I don't know if I want, I don't think I want that. I just want the can motor to come out. Some, because we are going to get this, if we split this apart, there's going to be significant timing we're going to have to play with. There is something, that's a screw, something just hit the ground. That guy, the headlight just came out, this is, it's falling apart. The more I spin it in my hands while I'm oogling in it, there's something that holds the frame together. So I'm just looking to see if there's screws or something somewhere in here, and the more I keep farting with it, the more it just literally keeps falling apart. 
See this? Here's some more stuff coming out. I guess we're just gonna have to take all the wheels apart and now the two halves stuff. There's an axle gear right there. It's our main go-getter. This little square guy, he was sitting right in there. Here's a square guy right there. This probably broke off of that square guy. Screws and stuff in there. Another spacer just fell out. Here's a spacer right up in there. There, now the motor's out, yes. Cases are split in half. This thing is still in the way. It eats us. And here's that guy. And it was glued to something also. So we've got parts broken. Broken axle gear. It's funny how they're, they're all broken. Not just one, all of them. See these guys, they got a square on them. And then the axles, they're square. That's what, that's what makes it easy to time. That's the difference between the Type 2 and the Type 1. I bet into this one here. Oh, look, it even says Lionel right on the bottom. Crazy. These ones do not have timings on them. Ugh. Now I need to figure out what little pieces go to what here and get them glued for all these dowels that hold this whole kit and caboodle together before we get getting. We got to take it apart because we had to... We had to inspect this gear right here. Hopefully it's all there. It's got some grease on it. We need to clean this off, re-grease it. We can bench test this little feller. Give it some fresh oil. See if it's doing what it's supposed to do. This thing, I mean, it really just, I just, I still don't think I like them. I don't. Now the next one, of course, will be a lot easier to take apart because you know that you got screws up in here. They were hiding. They were hiding out like nobody's business. We want to clean up this frame in here. It's funky. And of course the valve gear and everything is in the way. This part right down through here, it's just pushed in on the frame. And you can gently pull it back. This part up here, it's got some really bad old glue holding it in on the back side of this. See, it looked like that. So if you come in here and you can gently, ever so gently, pry this steam chest off and then it's just got to be re-glued again that'll really open up this this frame for the final final cleaning nerve-wracking absolutely knowing how brittle this plastic can be it's starting to come off so we're going to get this guy coming and then we keep prying it up here come underneath pry on the bottom it's just kind of a it's also also more like a friction fit. Just can't believe the old boys engineered it that good. Now, yeah, ooh, yes, oh so much. Try that out, there it is. You can see remnants of old glue right there. Then we'll take this and lay it up out of the way. So now we got our frames cleaned. Now these pieces that came out, this is a lock and these are the insulating washers that go here, here, here. These little white little buggers right here. They're gonna sit down in here, and this is what keeps the back of the frame from touching. Another one goes right there. So this is, this is what they call the split frame. So these two are sitting like this, and the juices has come up and energized this whole side, and then you know the, the positive and negative flips back and forth. These are brittle. These are just insulative plastic washers that are fine, but these other pieces, they're broken, and, if, and it really fell apart pretty easy in my hand. It wasn't like I was prying the the heck out of it. So we gotta get this to be back together again. Oh, the joys. And whatever type of fastening device you use that goes across, it's gotta be non-conductive so the juices don't go and then it shorts out. Well, one of out of these three pins like this that are in there, I only got one, I need two more. I'm trying to glue these together, it ain't working very well. I took part of another one and I glued a head on it. I don't know if the glue is gonna set up really tight. Probably not. Just because it wants to make me crabby. Here's some old sprue right here. We need a square part like that. So I'm gonna warm up this end here, just a little, little squash. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, oh wait, not that much. We're gonna flatten it out. And once that dries, this is a nail file I stole from the little lady when she wasn't looking. You sand the round part into a square part. And then you can tell when you're done sanding if you can take the square part and put it down in the hole. So we can see how long this is. So I'm just gonna cut this that length. And then I'm gonna drill it and I'm gonna tap it for a 256. And I'm gonna have new non-conductive pins to hold this silliness together. Yep, that's my goal. 
I took the old digital caliper and I measured the outside of these things, 3.27, and the sprue, 3.33, uh-huh. The key is we gotta get these insulative washers over it. So as long as these slide down, I'm super, super happy. A little more, yeah, see? Ah, so this is working. None of these parts are on the parts loco because it's a generation one. So we got a doer by hand. So I've got a longer one and a shorter one to replace this longer one and the broken. So I got one original and I can make more all day long. We're gonna tap for 256 screw. A number 50 tap just happens to be a 1 16th of an inch drill bit. And I don't have a lathe and we're not building a piano or a drag racing engine. So I am going to just eyeball this and I'm going to drill away. So after some careful drilling, Get the hole right down the center. Throw a little tap on it, and we got these new pins made. Yeah, and that is working. Well, we got that crisis averted. Built two of them custom scratch, fabricated them. Now we can go back on to working on the locomotive. Wow, what a hassle. Jeez. I guess since we got this all taken apart like this, we're gonna Q-tip it, mineral spirits it, get all the gunk off, we wash it into some water, clean it, make it sparkly, and then we'll start reassembling this chassis. No wheels yet, just a chassis. Yep. Well, we got this motor out, let's just go ahead and Give her just a little taste. Just a little bit less than too much. Easy enough to test, that's for sure. It's just out here in the open. Oh yeah. Doesn't feel like a real smooth runner. Here's a good reason why I can't have nice scenics on my layout. I always keep using it as a workbench at the same time. Goodness grace. I need more room. Does anybody else ever do this? This has got an arrow that goes down. This frame sits, this is the top of it. This will be the engineer's side. Just put that little bugger, just get him right in there. We're gonna build up half of this frame and then try to stick the two together. Got this little reduction gear pin right here. Let's get a little loving loving on that. And of course now we can't grease anything else because the motor's in place. Guess we can give her one of these here once around. That will disperse itself over time. Here's some of the hassles I've noticed with this locomotive. All the pieces, they, they lay in here. And then you gotta like balance the whole dang thing together. See these go in down under here. See, and they're, see they're just, they're flopping in the wind. It's like that's going to make it super hard, I believe. These little pins that I made here, they gotta go, they gotta go in and then they gotta stay. They gotta stay in a certain spot. I got three different sizes. The two short ones are gonna go up in towards the front. Two shorties here, put the long one back here. And now of course, as soon as I turn it over, they're gonna wanna fall in. Here's those spacers. Keep it poked in, put the spacer on, all at the same time. Well, what I'm gonna try to do is get these in, get their little spacers on. And I'm gonna put a touch of glue on them just to hold everything in place. The ones I made are a little bit thicker than the original black one, which is right here. So of course the pin wants to keep falling out. So I put a little glue little CA on it. Hold all these three in place. So what kind of shot do we got just to drop this all together? I guess we got shots, we got, we can do it all day. We can do it all weekend if we wanted, but I really rather get it done all at once. What a, just a poor, horrible, this is like, kind of reminds me of putting E units together. It's not so bad if you got a jig. Is that it? Did I get it? Golly, I think so. Put these screws back in that hold the chassis in. Little tiny buggers. Is the pin long enough? No. We gotta push the pin in from the other side. You gotta hold this together gently while I fight with these screws. I don't want too much pressure on it. There, yeah, there. All of these retaining, retaining screws were shot when I got to this. So we had to go through all this just in order to make the upgrade to the axles. Yep, that one's holding. Yep, something's grabbing. Those little white things down under here, that's, what's, that's what holds our cover on once we screw it in place. So these little screws, the original ones, and the original pins were all absolute junk. Made a new pin for up here, a new pin for back here. This one here, we had to use a 
bigger, longer, nicer screw in it. And I'll bet you this isn't just gonna slide in, is it? You know, and this light bulb, it fell out so fast. That light bulb just goes in. <laughs> it's just so pathetic. The old smoker here, which is one of the worst designs ever, because if you ever took the locomotive and set it on its side, if this has got any of the juices in it, it's just gonna leak all over the place. I would never fill the thing up. Plus it has no chugger, so all it's just gonna do is just leak, it's just gonna leak out the top. And I believe since the wires are wrapped around the ends right here, they just touch each side of the frame and that's what gives it its juice. Let's just see what it does. I'm really looking for lights. The old smoker was working. Now we gotta start on getting all this back together. Now this went on with a really nice friction fit. Is it gonna stay like that? Nope. What I'm gonna do is use some CA. CA will work on metal. It does, true story. Get the bar in, oh God. There we go, yep, better. These are the magical parts that I was waiting for from the place it's called the Shapeways. Some guy 3D engineered these and then he, I don't know, I don't know how, I guess I got to research it. You send your idea to Shapeways and then they 3D print them up for you? Do you get any money? I mean, I had to pay for them, I know that. Never used them before, hoping that they hold up well. Cut them off this silly holder thingy, come on, okay. These are the ones for the Type 2, because you can see the little square right there in the end. And this is really beneficial for timing, for quartering them. That's what makes this one one more better than the phase one. So now we gotta fart around and get all these on the wheels. Oh, immediately broke it. Just broke the thing. Put our gear driven one here. Let's get this other side on. We got all these guys on and the drive rods, they're all, they're all in time. I mean, we're not gonna be able to get too crazy off on this. So we gotta put these other ones in one quarter of a turn off. And see all the squares are all lined up. So we just, instead of having these straight down, we're just gonna put them a quarter different. Yep, them gears are absolute <laughs> Well, this is absolutely depressing. Piece of the gear right there. They didn't, they didn't even make it on. I couldn't put two axles in. This front one, shoot, it broken. It's completely in half. Nice, nice job. Every single one of them cracked while putting on the first side. Then I just figured, well, let's just see if we can get the other, you know, just so it hangs right. Nope, done, junk. Try to get the words together in my head and use clean ones. Uh, if you ever met me in person, uh, I sound a lot like uh, the guys, the sailors down at the dock, you know what I mean? Keeping it clean for me. On this channel it could be difficult sometimes. I don't like Bachman's to begin with and I keep trying to be the one that can come up with the idea to, to be the savior of all these poor Bachman's. Now these original gears they, they came from Shapeways. After after these things they broke like butterfly wings. So I, I, I penned a very formal letter telling them my disappointment in the gears. I told them that each and every piece cracked and broke when attempting to install them onto the axles. I sent them pictures of the shipping labels and all this and that. I added, I'm hoping that the gears were printed with the wrong, whatever the gears are printed with. I don't, I don't know what that stuff's called. And perhaps they could be printed with something that's not so brittle. You know, may, may, it sounds fair enough, don't it? And I said, if the gears cannot be printed with a better product, I'd like to have my money refunded. Now Shapeways, immediately, I had responses like the next morning. A couple automated ones and then uh, this feller penned this one, his name's Mitchell, uh, blah, blah, blah at the beginning. And then he says, I'm not 100% surprised the tan, fine detail plastic offering is not known for its strength and its rather brittle material, mostly used for miniature models, but not actual functioning gears. I've taken down the products and informed the designer seller that he would need to sell this in a different material for better results. And then they said the refund will be processed in a couple days and it and it certainly was. Well, I found out that the designer seller was a feller named James. And digging around on the internet, he's got this website called jamesmodelrailwaycompany.com. I'm not going to read it, but this this is it all printed out with nice words and 
regards and good afternoons and sincerely in it and you know just kind of told him what Shapeways had told me and I asked him if there's any way to to make a better gear because Shapeways I asked him if they you know they absolutely washed their hands of it they knew they were putting out a poor product and they didn't even offer to hey let me run it in a different resin nope nope they said it, it's almost be to the designer the designer this James model railway company no no response yet so this turned into a dead end uh, Shapeway said that they would pull the product off two days after getting that email they were still available for sale on Shapeways yeah so I mean I was at my absolute wits end and then I got a message from this feller on the eBay messaging which isn't the best way to message people because eBay looks looks at them all <laughs> I know but he's got an eBay username of Ratsbird1. He's out of West Fargo, North Dakota, you know. He tells me about this guy that's selling replacement 3D printed Bachman HOGS4 484 axles and gear sets Gen 1, Gen 2 on the eBay. So I searched him up, immediately found it from the seller. Goes by the seller named DW5304. And this guy, I messaged him, he was on it. Uh, the messaging went on. Uh, we were back and forth for quite some time and He's got a great story did me a deal because I wanted you know one of each set combined the shipping Shot him out to me. You know, we chatted it up great great guy So let's get into what we found out by installing the second set of gears. Well, here we go with the next set of gears Looks like I got two sets here for this Gen 2. It's got the square in it. I gotta carve them off this, this thing. Oh, that was brittle. Clean up this flash some. Am I nervous? Yeah. I really want to be able to find a way to fix these. Here's this Shapeways <laughs> Destructo Man. Cause it even broke again just trying to take it off the wheel. Now I don't know how I'm supposed to file these. How hard do you jam them on there? I'd like to just simply push them on. Call it a day. It, uh, how's it feel? Feels tight. Kind of want a little arbor press is what I'd really like to have. I gotta tell you that that square does not look to be the same. So, I mean, it ain't, it ain't trying to go in. I mean, this one over here, I mean, it did. This side, it, it just seems smaller. Well, that one cracked. Try another one, I guess. Cracked. Make sure there ain't no debris on these axles. We are not having good success. And I can I can tell that the ding the axle squares are smaller. And here's the original one. I mean that's a significant difference in the squares in there. I'm telling you. So on this Gen 2 right here, there's squares right here to make it easier to time this whole thing up. So I took the old digital caliper there and I measured on an X. And then I measured on a Y and I wrote the numbers down right here. And you see there's all, there's one millimeter, one, wait a second, hundreds, one, one hundredths of a millimeter difference here, three one hundredths of a millimeter, if I'm reading this, reading, this one's up to 2.2. That's, that's quite thick, but every one is one to three one hundredths of a millimeter off. Now these little fellers here that are printed, I was talking to Dan, he says he makes these at 2.14 and I can't, I can, yeah, we can see at 2.14 and I'm sitting at 2.16 to 2.19 that these, they're not going to fit. Now he offered to print wider, bigger. He showed me, he sent me a thing, he showed me that he's making these, at, you know, the, the plan. Or you can get a machinist file and open them up a little bit. Now the original gear, I made these brass sleeves for it right here so I can sleeve it back together. 2.14. Isn't that just obnoxious? <laughs> what is this brass sleeve thing that you're talking about? <laughs> well, in part of my exploration of projects like this, I ran across this website. You see, I, that's why I don't get a chance to watch a lot of other people's YouTube videos because I'm always digging around looking up stuff about things and things. It's called the railwire.net. It's, it's got these pictures and a completely detailed photo array of how to make these little tiny brass sleeves. But this guy had lathes, and mini lathes, and mini drill presses, and arbor presses, 
and I don't got all that stuff, but I, I got a will to make brass sleeves. Let me show you how I made these brass sleeves real quick. Now, I just decided at the end of these original gears here, I just gave her everything I could and I come up with the fact that it's 3 16 of an inch. A little bit smaller than that. A little bit smaller than 3 16 because these are, there, 11 64ths. So that's what I want. So I randomly went to the store and just bought any old piece of brass pipe here. And this has got an outside diameter of 3 16 But it doesn't fit over the end of these. Nope. It's just, it's because that's the outside diameter and we got the inside diameter. Get you a standard old pipe cutter. I'm going to take off about that much right there. So can you see that in there? Okay. Give her the old spinny spinny. Get you a little sleeve here. There it is. I'm going to open this up. Brass is malleable. So I got three different sized drill bits here. Bevel on that thing. Sometimes it's hard because when you cut it, it crushes it down even a little smaller. I just want it on the drill bit. So I'm going to give it some of these. Now, now drill bits may be getting harmed during this, this process. I mean, they're mostly disposable anyway, right? Sometimes I find jamming it down the drill index hole, this part right here. I can put it in there, tap, tap this down, and I can get that up there. We need to stretch it. We're gonna stretch it by this, doing this. Now you can see that it slides on and off there quite easy. We're gonna go to the next size up. Drill index, drove it on there. Next drill bit larger. Now this will have a tendency to sometimes not make them completely round. So then what I do is I roll it out like this and this will help make the tube get back into a round shape. We want the 1164, so we want it on to be able to get on this. Use the drill index to get her onto this one. To do get it around like this, make sure that the sleeve is turning. You can make this tip of this thing a little more like a ramp, to kind of chamfer the ends. Cone more, little, just a tiny little bit cone shaped right here. We just gotta get it kind of going on there. And then file down, because there's just a lip here. I made this a little too wide. So I'm just gonna file it down. One more to do. Maybe I can get these rebuilt broken Bachman gears to actually work. Well, the first one I made probably took two hours. And then each one that I made gets progressively faster and I'm down to making them in about 15 minutes. I've already done the geared one. Here's the other little idlers. I do want to see if I can run into town tomorrow and get a machinist file. I just want to, <clears throat> Just a little, I just want to dance around a little bit. Just a little tickle. Make these relax a little bit. Are we going to install them in? Uh, whatever I, so six weeks waiting for parts that for broke, broke. To see if these ones will hold up any better. They certainly shouldn't with these, these buggers right here on them. Yeah. If I know with jamming this on, it ain't going to break. Doesn't really want to get started. Clean up, kind of see if I can chamfer these edges here. Right at the top or something. Maybe they just got a little bit of. Something, something hanging up on them. I'm trying to make it like a shoot. Oh, my God. Oh, we got one. Holy smoke bottoms. It's in its way out. Of course it will be. Why, why wouldn't it be? Well, we'll keep working on pushing that in there. I think what I need to do is I need to make these sleeves really very, very small. Well, today's shopping experience was a good one. Our local nut and bolt supply shop had these at it. Unfortunately, it's got this word here in China, needle file set. And it's got just this cutest little tiniest square one, which of course is too big, you know, up here, but down here it's working really well. And then I found myself some little tiny nut drivers, metric ones. Thank God all the stuff's made in China. And I can take the wheels off of the connecting, you know, out of here to make them easier. And then I found this sweet little vise, tabletop vise. So we took the side rods off the wheels and then I file this all down in here, just some. These are tight. The original ones, they are tight. And I got this one 
wheel that's on already over here. So one that's at the top and then the opposite side is a quarter behind it. So I know how to time these up and then I want it to just get started just a little bit before I go to go to pushing on it with the vise. It's got to just a little bit get started some. Not yet. So we'll keep filing it and I'm just kind of filing it at the ends still trying to make that funnel shape so it gets started and then it'll press in. I'm not sure if I need to put any CA in these or not. I mean they're really pretty tight. Make sure everything's lined up. We're gonna have our wheel gauge here ready to go so we know how to put it. Goodness we are like a quarter of an inch off. Nervous? Yes. This is my last my last hope. I've got all the tools. Man that is getting tight I tell you. I'm gonna get some little nuts to put around this flange right here. So I want to make sure I'm pushing directly on the center. A little bit of that butyl tape, put it here in the center to hold this nut, because you know it ain't gonna stay on its own. And there's some there's some force on this. You wouldn't believe it. Oh yeah. But there's one assembled and put back together. Two more to do, one to check. A little something I'm doing to check these wheels for straightness. I'm gonna blow on this wheel. Yeah, there's no wobble. Sweet. Well, I believe that one of the reasons why it was really tough to press on, there's a lip, a cup, there's a bearing surface right in there. And the thickness of, of this copper here spread it out. So I had to do just a little filing right in there in order to get this wheel to do its its spinny spinny thing so this we're still definitely making forward movement so i used a square little square file just to come by just just some and then i used a rat tail in here and cleaned up this bearing surface because there's really nothing that that makes this mate up really really solid so it could be off just a little bit so we're just gonna you know just kind of true it up to get it spin like it's supposed to spin so i'm going to remove the rest of these wheel sets so we'll double check this one and just keep going i'll stop when we have a failure all the valve trains put back together i just got the bottom cover snapped on i haven't oiled anything in there yet i just want to see if it's going to turn it's going to do anything it's going to short out i don't know huh i can't believe it well i guess we better grease it up let's put a little conductive grease in there so this is this is done i mean all i gotta do is put it back together now the sleeves they're just barely visible underneath those flanges of the wheels every one of them had to be filed down in order to get it to spin because it swelled up just a little bit because of the thickness of that brass sleeve premium carbon conductive grease this is all metal down in here so i'm not too worried about it having reinteractions with the plastic i want to spin that some come on now just a little bit little turn Yes, give these another little taste in here. Just a little, to a tiny bit. I can see that it's tracked all the way around there. We're gonna get just a little bit of super lube on this lower gear right there, where that front screw holds this, oh, the, holds the body on. These are the little pieces that fell off. Wow, oh, we're gonna have to glue those. Just can't, just no, there's no brakes. No brakes given here. This is uh, it's kind of what I expected right there. Yeah, doesn't need its tender to work. This thing did not run, could not run when it showed up because of all the broken gears in it. And it could even, it could even creep. Oh, look at how nice that is. Holy moly. Shockingly enough, it's got flanges on all four of those wheels. I wonder how it handles the little, the little tight curves, you know. I'm going to show you the, the insides of these things so you can tell the first gen from a second gen. I've got them all. I've, that's, that's over here. And I'll, there you go. Yeah. So this is the first gen Bachman made in Hong Kong. It says it right on the bottom. Right over here is a Lionel Bachman. And it says it's made, you know, Lionel on the bottom. Don't let anybody tell you that these are different. If I can throw just a little light on it. See how they've got their motor it's built it's built in somewhere in the frame here okay they're both both identical both of them on the insides okay no smoking unit now this is the type 2 bachman oh gosh, why did i even bother 
Made in China. Cab number 4446. So I'm going to assume all the 4446s are going to be a Gen 2. Now I'm just assuming. But all of the 4454s, they're all going to be a first gen made by Bachman. First gen being these could be from the 80s. And this might be a Spectrum. I don't know. This is the box that the thing came in. All the tenders all look identical. The boilers, they all look the same. Let's flip them upside down. Okay, well this one's got a smoke hole in it because, you know, the smoker. This one doesn't. And it looks like they do mount up a little different because right there is the rear cab mount or the rear body mount, I should have said. This one is doing it from the pilot. Can you switch the bodies over? I mean, I'd, I'd try it. The Lionel. These two are identical. Other than this one, they wrote on it towards, can, I, can we make it show up? Lionel, Hong Kong. Uh-huh, yeah. Let's pop the bottom off of this one so you can see what the Type 1 axles look like. This is the Lionel. This piece came off the exact same. A lot of these things are very, very similar. Uh, here's the, this one, these are stripped. See how I can, I can spin that? That's, that's creating some havoc. It's got the drive gear in the back instead of second back like the Type 2. And the axles, they got a pin. So they're completely, completely round in here. So going back to these gear kits, just as a refresher, this is Type 1. These will be the Type 2s. You want to open up the, the Bachman just to prove it. Some guy tried to tell me that there's the difference, that there's, they're different inside. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think so. Yep, they are. Well, then here we're proving it. There's only two types out there. There's not three. There's only a type one and there's only a type two. There it is. It's almost time to wrap this video up. Let's get the body on that type two and drive it around and see how good it looks. Before we run this thing down the rail, I want to take a second. We're, we're like a week away from Christmas right now. I've been an entertainer for 25 years. I used to be a mobile DJ. Uh, I used to do concert sound and lighting reinforcement, bar gigs, wedding receptions. And I've never had any of my clientele, I, I fix high-end RVs for people. I never have any of my clientele ever send me stuff for Christmas. This year, so far, I've gotten three Christmas cards. This is just the best. Thank you so much. This one in here from Wayne. Wayne and uh, Tara, the little lady out there, sent me a couple cool pictures. I want to take just a second to thank you guys for doing this. Another one here came from Dave out of Vernon, New Jersey. Like how sweet the card is right there. Love it. Fans of your show, thank you so much. It says Michelle and David. Yeah, yeah, out of Vernon, New Jersey. And then another one, the third one we got here so far, came from John and Nancy out of our... Oh, good Lord. Argus, Indiana. I probably blew it. Probably blew it. Tons of pictures of his layout. Very nice job out there on it, I gotta tell you. And then he bought me a couple uh, six packs of beer. <laughs> well, not directly, but that's what I'm gonna turn it into. Thank you guys. Merry Christmas to all you guys. Uh, it'll be after Christmas before I get the next video out. Let's stop wasting our time, especially yours. Let's look at this thing. Let's see what it looks like now that it's done successfully rebuilt the gears in it cost me buck buck and a half well for materials i probably spent two hundred dollars the tools and parts that didn't work and uh beer oh, oh yeah that looks a lot a lot better with the body on it yeah oh man that looks really nice Get it down over here to creep and speed. Sure. Because you know, there's a road coming up, so you gotta go as slow as you can. Block off traffic. I am absolutely loving it. Thank you guys so much for following along. I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Bye bye.